cmpradio.net, the voice of Chester. Live in living color, good Monday night, Dave Berman with you on Delco Sports 360. Our special guest is, boy, I'm being very official here. Anyway, and I have to be, is Brandy Johnson. There she is to my left, and she is the first year head coach, Strathaven High School Girls Basketball Program. And Strathaven, of course, is located in Wallingford, Delaware County, the 40th year of Strathaven Boys and Girls Basketball. Brandy, thank you for coming on the show. It's uh, congratulations on the gig also. Thank you so much for having me. And you've been on, you said you've done some TV stuff here and there. No radio yet, but TV. Yeah. All right. And Brandy, of course, you're a fine girl. You know, you, that, that song, you probably heard that many, many times over the, <laughs> by Looking Glass back, I was, I think, in eighth grade, 1972. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you probably heard that a lot. Yeah. All right, Brandy. And uh, say hi to your, uh, your honey, because I call my wife my honey. Hi. You got, what's his name again? His name's Blaze. Blaze, okay. Anyway, so big, I, I know he's probably getting, little nervous about the Phillies, but the, yeah, game one tonight <laughs> of the 2023 National League Championship Series. All right, Brandy, uh, you've been with the Strathaven program for the last couple of years, I believe, under Chrissy Yost, who did a tremendous job the past few years, but uh, she resigned because of uh, she wanted to follow her kids in sports. Yeah, she was awesome. She was actually also my fifth grade teacher. So we definitely bonded in a different way, but she did a great job. Um, and I thank her for opening up the doors for me and you know just being there to support. She was a tremendous player, man. Now, you talk about heart over height. She was a bulldog. Well, we used to be the Nether Providence Bulldogs. I got my <laughs> Nether Providence. That's where I graduated from in 1976, which became Strathaven the summer of 1983. But uh, she was a bulldog as a player. I, I sent you some articles, and I'm sure she has some incredible stories to tell. Her coach, I believe, was Mr. Bill Sweeney, one of my teachers back in the day. Yeah, so he actually came into a few practices and he taught everyone the two two one trap. Uh, that was legendary. Yeah, and he came to some of our practices. It was cool. Yeah, and so the, the history is rich. Now tell us your story. You grew up in South Media, and you actually graduated from Strathaven High School, you said 2014. Yes. But before that, you were out of the area. Yes, I was in the Pacific Northwest in the Puget Sound area. Seattle? Yes. How'd you end up out there? Your mom and dad just decided to move out there? Well, my parents separated, and my mom's side of the family was all military. So they were on the military base in Fort Lewis. So I went with my mom, and honestly, I feel very blessed that I had the opportunity to see a different part of the world. And basketball there, in high school, they had a shot clock. Did they? Which town were you in? Spanaway. Spanaway. How far is that from Seattle? I would say about 45 minutes. So see, our, the Seattle Supersonics, <laughs> uh, that's how old I, I, you know, and oh my gosh. So uh, great to see Hawks. Yes. Were you there when they won the, uh, they won the Super Bowl, right? They did. I don't think. I, you, I can't, no, I'm I'm losing my mind here. But uh, anyway, so you were up there, then you moved back to the, where were you born though? 
I was born in Ch at Crozier in Chester. There you go. And I was born in Chester, Chester Hospital, which is now Chester High School. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it, they, they tour Chester Hospital down, built Chester High, 1974. Wow. That's more history for you. Okay. So anyway, born in Chester, then you grew up- In South Media. In South Media, and a lot of great athletes from South Media in the Sapovitz Park, so you know all about that. And so you graduated Strathaven in 2015, and you went 14. to play- uh, 14. 14, and then you went to play some college basketball. Tell us about that. So I walked on to Cabrini my freshman year, and I played under Kate Pearson, Rob Drysdale. Um, that was probably my favorite experience. Um, so when I walked onto the team, Rob Drysdale was the one that actually pushed me and he was like, hey, you got this, like you can do this throughout the entire tryout. And that gave me motivation to think if I could walk onto Cabrini, I could walk onto any team I wanted. So I transferred to Penn State Brandywine in hopes of clenching a championship and then walking onto Penn State main campus. And try to play for the Nittany Lady Lions. Try, but okay, but anyway. Two days before the season, I tore my ACL Ugh. for Penn State Brandywine. Wow! Yeah. And Linnell Mosley, the new athletic director, had her on the show at Strathaven. She was one of your assistant coaches. Yes. There you go. Favorite assistant coach. Right. Then what did you do after well, after when you graduate? When did you graduate college? Two thousand. Two thousand twenty. 20, okay, then uh, what have you been doing since? So I do the taxes for the Wallingford Swarthmore School District. I'm a Strath, I'm a Wallingford native. Yeah. I pay taxes. <laughs> they act, I'm telling you, I don't wanna get anybody in trouble, but my school taxes went down a little bit, a little bit. I live in a condo though, I live at Putnam Boulevard. I'll okay. tell everybody, <laughs> can't come get me cause I'm on the second floor. I forget what floor I'm on, but anyway, <laughs> you know the high rise there. Yeah. So, um, I live in Putnam too. You live you live over that area anyway. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't run into you. But there's so many people living in that area. But anyway, so you do. Oh my gosh, do you have to deal with people complaining about their tax bills? Um, I did my first year because you know I got kind of thrown in and you know sink or swim. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. But now I feel very comfortable with the job. I have a great boss, Dewana Mosley. She actually is Chester alumni. She was a coach at Chester Charter. Yeah. Oh, awesome. She did a great job with the Chester Charter Lady Sabres before the, we just didn't have enough girls and we had a drop of the girls program. Oh. They have a co-op now with Chester Charter and Chester High with girls That's basketball, good. which is great. Uh, our volleyball team at Chester Charter is doing very well. Speaking of volleyball, Strathaven, Girls volleyball doing very well with Eliza. Yeah. Hereggy, not Hereggy, <laughs> which I hopefully I'll be doing some PA announcing for some of your games this year, and I'll be announcing her name a lot. So Eliza, her brother was a tremendous player. Now at college, you got the Theo coming up. So tell us about the, I know you've been probably checking out you, the girls volleyball team could maybe some could play basketball for you. Yeah, well, you know, I have Eliza Hereggy, like you yes. said. There is a girl named Laura McGinn she's a beast she can jump out of the gym so i hope she comes back but her pure dedication is volleyball so but you never know yeah, yeah but eliza is definitely going to play yes. all right so you come in here you've been assistant for how many years now at three. least two three years already yes i've I had actually, a chance to, yeah i actually came in under allison price she was my jv coach when i actually came back to strathaven Right. So she coached the JV team. Are you guys 6A or 5A this year? Do you know if we're you're, 5A. You're 5A, okay. Yeah. But you play in a league where it's a mixture of 6A, 5A, and some unbelievable teams at Garnet Valley. They're just so yeah. hard to beat. They went to the state finals a few years ago, and uh, they're trying some, but it's good in a way. It's good to play some 6A schools, and then you have a good competitive non league schedule. Yeah. So I don't, like the, I don't like some of these teams that play. They mix it up, they'll play their 6A and they'll play, the non-league schedule will be not very strong. They, you know, you, when you're 6A and you play in a mixture of a league, you wanna play a non-league schedule with 6A teams. But, you, right. you, but the, you're, you are playing 6A Chester High. Yeah. Yes, your Boo Dukes, what a matchup. We played last year at the end of the season. All right, so who's your assist, who are your assistants this year? So I have Christina Cutter. She actually played comments with my sister. Um, I also have 
my cousin Barbara Johnson, she's gonna help with practices. Um, Faith Raymond, she actually played at Strathaven and graduated the first year that I started, around 2021. 20, um, and I also have a girl named Hope Coacher. She's gonna be my assistant. She played at Haverford High School and with me at Penn State Brandywine. There you go. So how's the booster club coming along? Boosters are good. Good, because yeah. that's how it's good to have a good booster club. And I, I hope to be doing all home games for the boys, which I've been doing for four or five years. And then Nick Horvath had him on. And then we'll see what I, as many as I can do. I'm right up the street, too. So it's pretty cool that I can. And I swear I started my career 72, 73 as a freshman at Old Nether Providence High School doing public address. And we had some really great teams back then, Coach Smith and everything. But all right, let's talk about the girls that are coming back. What do you what do you got right now? So I have three returners from varsity starting. Um, Laura Shea, she's going to be a senior this oh, she, year. Uh, she's a soccer player. Yes. So there's, and they're going to make the playoffs, I think. Yeah. Strathaven. Yeah. Oh, Strathaven soccer has uh, historically been an unbelievable couple state champs for the girls. Yeah. And PIAA with, uh, and the boys had five with Mike Barge. Ever meet him before? Uh, probably, maybe. He was fiery. <laughs> He's still in the firing <laughs> intense. But anyway, so yeah, a lot of history there. So Laura, remember her last year. She's tall. Yes. Okay. And then you have Olivia uh, Vochelle. Yes. She's what grade is she gonna be this year? Junior. She's a junior. Yes. All right. And and Mariella Gill. Bucky Gill. Mom was a great, is, still looks like a great athlete. Yeah. Okay, so you know both the parents there. Bucky, the legendary Chester Biddy, St. James. And um, he, he lives right, I, I think I better watch where I say, but he lives in our, <laughs> in our hood in yeah. Wallingford. So tell us about uh, Mary Ella Gill and her, her aunt, Trish Phillips. Yeah. Well, yes. So, so Mary, anyway, so Mary Ella, she, she showed a lot of good signs last year. Yeah. Mary Ella is a tough player. She's very gritty. She's a hard worker and she is proof of dedication to basketball. Anything she puts her mind to, she's going to do it. Well, the good thing about her father, Bucky, he brings a lot of those old heads to the game, the, the chasing boys and everything, and I like that. And they're pretty, they're pretty uh, obviously old school, so they're yeah. you know, critical in their own way, but they leave the coaches alone. If I was a coach, and I, credit to Coach Clancy, Kevin Clancy, 32 years. If I have a, I'm just telling you what I would do. I, I don't know how tough it is. I, I've probably been through it. You're coaching the game, and then parents actually yell at you. Because I don't hear it at the games. I, to be honest with you, when I'm coaching, you block it out. I'm so in my zone that nothing yeah. really. Right, but it, if it happens, and you got to turn around sometimes. And let me coach the kids. I'm just saying that what <laughs> I would do. All right, right, but I don't have to worry about it because, you know, I get enough. You know, some people like to bust on well, my chops about the public address announcing, but <laughs> jo jokingly though. So anyway, you got those three coming back, and let's talk about the, some of the depth you're going to have. Well, you have two other starting positions available. Yeah, we do have two starting positions available. And Katie Trout, she plays soccer. She's a really good soccer athlete. But the one thing that I noticed about her, she's a sophomore this year. She was the first girl that I said, cut to the basket. And she, she drove. She cut to the basket. Pick so, and roll or just? No, she just She'll go. Okay. She'll attack the basket with no fear. So I'm excited to see how she does this upcoming year. Paired with Eliza Uregi, you know, she's going to be my sniper, three-point shooter. Well, her, I heard Theo is uh, Theo yeah. is doing great, you know. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, he's, only, he's only a sophomore also. And um, who else you have? So, you know, going down, we have Emily Riley. She's also a junior. Remember her, yeah. She has some height, you know. And between Liv, Emily Riley, and Laura Shea, that triangle is going to be awesome, you know. And we also have Annika Slootmaker. Yes, Annika Slootmaker. Yes. I remember messing up her first name. <laughs> or maybe going up to, you know, the, the scorer's table to pronounce it. But anyway, yeah, she had some athletes. Strathaven has a lot of athletes, man. You know, yes. Wally Swarthmore. And if you can keep the kids away from the private schools, did I say that? Which... <laughs> And I love the private schools, but it's it's nice to keep your kids, if as many as you can, hometown. Hometown. So, and, and that's something that hopefully you'll be able to do for the most part, because they're they're around. They check out the kids for, starting at fourth, fifth grade. W what's the feeder program look like? You know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grades. So I'm actually going to have a few basketball clinics this upcoming season. The girls are going to be the ones running it. 
that's gonna be something good for our feeder programs. Um, I actually also encourage all sixth graders incoming to the middle school to do cross country. Blaze's daughter, Adriana, my baby girl, mm -hmm. she, I told her, she's on my AU team. I was like, if you wanna be successful on my basketball team, you need to do cross country. Gotta be in shape, yep. Okay, it'll, and it benefits you in all areas of your life. It does, running. yeah. So. so that's great, you're working with the other coaches. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Nick, and then the coach Clancy on the boys' side, uh, the soccer, the field hockey, you're, you're trying to, and uh, how's Linnell doing? I mean. Awesome, she's crazy uh, good. I can imagine, I mean, yeah. that is not an easy job. Yeah. That is not an easy job, it's tough enough, but I think she told me she has an assistant, have to have an assistant She somewhere. has like a secretary. And there's someone that actually works in the middle school. His name is David Neal. So he's kind of overseeing the middle school and just goes off mm -hmm. of Linnell's lead. But they make a great team. And, you know, just the overall environment in the district right now is focused on, you know, K through 12. So yes. I think just having those, you know, little pockets of paying attention to just solely the middle school, the activities and the sports, they're doing a great job. How's the Central League looking again this year? You got to, you know, oh my gosh. And then you have Haverford. I know. And they want, they have a lot of great athletes. In the yeah. spring, they won the girls PIAA State Championship track and field. Okay. And I think we're going to be honoring the head coach at our uh, next Delco Hall of Fame event uh, in, in the spring. But that's an amazing accomplishment. We have great sports in Delco. Spring yeah. sports, we won three PIAA state championships in lacrosse, Marple Newtown boys, double A, did you know that? I did Ra not. Radnor, triple A boys, and then uh, Archbishop Carroll, some unbelievable teams, Pencrest is good, and then, ha and then girls basketball, Delco, private school, but it was Archbishop Carroll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually, last year, my dad took me to the O'Hara basketball tournament. It was Rustin, Villa Maria, Carroll and O'Hara. Great basketball. Yes, and I was, of course, pulling for Carroll in the state final. They played Cedar Cliff. It's a public school, but they were undefeated. And they had about Olivia Jones, who left their pro. Even their the private schools are going after the kids out there. Olivia Jones left Cedar Cliff undefeated, but Carroll beat him in the finals. Ebers, the Ebers girls. Wow. And he's got the two youngest ones coming back. She started as a freshman, but anyway, for Carroll. But uh, Olivia's going to West Town. Wow. We could use her at Strathaven. We could use her at <laughs> public schools here, but she's going to West Jessica Town. Jessica Kalecki. She goes to Germantown Academy. Okay, I hear it. Now, that's the interact. That's non-PIAA. Yeah, but she's from Strathaven. Why did she move out of... In yes, Germantown. Cool. Germantown Academy. And she lives in Wallingford. Yep. That's a, that's a hike, but... Hey, I'm, she's balling, though. Yeah, well, she, I can imagine. She came through Media Hoop, so... Yeah. And Do you know, good. yeah, I was in an old heads banquet the other night, the uh, basketball <laughs> old heads up in Concha Hawk, and I met Mike Flynn, Philadelphia Bells. Do you know any, he's a Philadelphia no. Bells, they're AAU, they right? Were, they were rivals with like the Comets. Oh, okay. Well, he, I he he's Comets. been there 50 years. Ooh, 50, wow. he was in his, I have to have put that picture on. I think I put it somewhere, but I, have a, I had a picture with Mike Flynn and he was talking about the Philadelphia Bells and had some stories of kids all over the state that would come down to play for him. So you're in the, uh, the now how does the AAU, I know that's more, that's more run and gun style. I don't really yeah. get into it too much, but a lot of kids, they want to play a more controlled game. Yeah. You know, so uh, how does, how do you work together with the AAU programs? So I coach younger girls. AAU, Media Youth Center, about fifth grade, sixth grade. You know, and in our area, in media, there aren't a lot of players that have played their entire life, you know? So, for example, we would put our girls in smaller tournaments like the Glen Mills tournament, just so that they can get exposed to AAU basketball. You know, so I think, with more practice and you know that stop AAU is a totally different ball game. Yeah, I, I don't follow. I, I see city of now uh, city of basketball love. You need to contact them. Okay. That's a great publication. They do girls basketball previews and boys. Okay. To start. So Josh Ferlin's the guy, and I, I I'll, I'll send you the link to the, the website. They've been doing some previews, so it'd be good okay. to get you can go, get it's great. A lot of people check it out. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll send you that. Hopefully, Boo Dukes will do the same thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a you know it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. It, 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 and you you seem very excited, and you don't seem nervous on TV. I love it here. It's great. <laughs> what do you think, man? Yes, here you go. 
So what do you think of our studios here, Fifth Street Chester? It's nice. Old Honestly, school building. I was not expecting like so much beautiful art and it's like a oh, gallery. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yes, it is. It was a vibe when I walked in. Yeah, so well, and we'll get you out of here. So you have plenty of time to now. Can you watch these perfect? Can you watch the Phillies and the Eagles? You actually, is your honey watched all? I boyfriend watched the whole game. Absolutely, have to watch every second. Does it every moment? How does he handle it? Because a lot of ups and it's downs. A, it is a lot of ups and downs. So last Trust night, me, I know. The Eagles were on, and I, we got actually. We don't have regular TV, but we got the the game. My wife, and she's much more down to earth. She grew up in Central PA. She's relaxed, and she just, oh, I want to. Uh, let's see what's going on in the game. I go, honey, I don't want to watch it because <laughs> I don't want to get aggravated. Yeah, okay. And then she she was a little irritated at me, but she we, she turned it off for me. And then I'm following a little online. You know, I'm trying to do some other stuff. Like I was researching, you know, you and the, you know, Chester, you know, Strathaven girls basketball and then Dion. And I'm on there. Our dentist is coming in soon. Dennis Shaw will be joining us after uh, we get through here. So I'm on there and uh, I, you know, I'm looking at them just hoping you know, Eagles win, you know, but uh, no, uh, just uh, it was a, a terrible loss. But that's a teaching, even Jalen Hurts said this is a teaching moment and it's it could happen at the high school level. Absolutely. What he, that, that pass, any sport. How about, Chris? you're too young to remember. Chris Weber. <laughs> do you remember? He called a timeout you didn't have. That's another one you have mm. to do. Get the kids focused and the game management. How about making foul shots? Foul shots. It's a mental game. It's totally yes. a mental game. You have to tell yourself it's going in. And there you yes, got it. You, you have you, to visualize it. Well, Sam Jones was a great Hall of Fame player. Played with Bill Russell and the Celtics back in the day. I remember as a little kid watching his like a video. or It was a TV, you know, TV show. And he said, always look shoot look at the front of the rim try to just get it over the front of that's, that's what he, he said unbelievable free throw shooter so they win and lose games yeah you win some you lose some because the teams are gonna yeah may have a you may have a 10 point lead well a minute 50 to go some teams are gonna start fouling you then mm -hmm. and then but they changed the rules around a little they bit did. can you i'm a little confused with it are you i guess you have to know I what's going on i have to know i think one and ones they changed it Due to injuries, like to prevent injuries of but some sort this, underneath the whatever, basket. Whatever the rule is, I think it's going to benefit teams that like to press. Like, I think it'll benefit like Chester, the Coatesville's guys that like Norristowns that like to go after it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, you can use a few fouls here and there. So I, I'm not, but it, you're, it changes you, the game. It's going to change the game. It is. And there's only time will tell. And timeouts. So are you, are you nervous at all? Are you, are you, you don't seem nervous at all. You're looking, you know. I mean, I know that it's my first year and mm -hmm. I'm going to learn so much through wins, through losses, through practices. Mark Brewster wanted to talk to you. Mr. I spoke, Brewster. I talked to him. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Now, he was a soccer coach. I, I told you the story. <laughs> they won the state championship 97. And he, but anyway, he is, he gets, he was a major part of that championship as a coach. And he's, his father, Coach Brewster's father, Jesse Brewster, absolute Chester legend, played at Penn State back in the 1940s, I believe. Wow. Yeah, so Mr. Bru Coach Brewster's been around, one of my mentors back in the day. So you had a nice long talk with him. Yeah, Good. just yeah. about the culture and how he ran things. And, yes. you know, they like to have practice ending at a certain time, have the girls home. To he dinner. was assistant coach basketball, I think, too. Yeah, wasn't he? yeah, yeah. okay. So, uh, Mr. Sinelli, uh, you didn't get a chance. To know. So, this is the 40th anniversary. The last year was Nether Providence. 82-83, we won the PIAA state championship. Wow. With Lisa Kano and Mr. Smith was the coach. One assistant, Mr. Sinelli. Now, Mr. Renzulli also. He had two assistants, but in that picture, the team picture, was only Mr. Smith and Mr. Um, Mr. Sinelli. So they, they won the state championship, 83. Then we merged with Swarthmore to become Strathaven the summer of 83. We went back to the state finals, 4A that year. They went from three to four classes in uh, the summer of 83. And we went to the PIAA state final, lost to Susie McConnell Serios team. Uh, we lost to them um, in overtime. Mm. Le Seton LaSalle, heartbreaker at Hershey Park. Ouch. But we got that far. Yeah. It, it was a heartbreaker. And uh, Susie McConnell, obviously, serial. You know, her nephew is T.J. McConnell, NBA, former Sixer. Dad, um, her brother, 
uh, O'Connell, crazy coach. So uh, mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, from Western PA. So it, it's the 40th anniversary, 83, 84. Wow. And we went to the state finals that year. We made some uh, runs over the years. A lot tougher now with the, the, the private schools, the Philadelphia Catholic League in the PIAA state tournament. But, hey, you can win a district tournament, but that's still tough. Yeah. I mean, we have a few tough components in the Central League, and I'm super, super excited. Garnet Valley. Yep. Haverford, mm -hmm. 6A schools. Um, and, uh, we're going to have Marble, Marble Newtown, Scrappy, Springfield, Delco. Love. Always tough. Love. Kai, right? Kai McNichol, yes. head coach. Um, Ridley is 6A. I'm just, I'm just losing my mind here. I can't think. You're going to play Chester. They're going to be good. Looking forward to seeing their progression yep. with Boo Dukes. How'd you set that up this year? And the game's going to be out at Strathaven. Yes. Yeah, so last year we actually played Chester to complete like our schedule. So he's always been very nice and approachable. And he was like, let's get something scheduled. So why not? He's an old head already. Boo. Yeah. He, he, he's been around a while. I recognize, I, I recognize him. I got, I got some pictures of him playing for Chester in 85, 86, 87, <laughs> man. He was number he was with Keith Taylor, who's the, the boys' basketball coach now. So that, that's awesome. So we're playing Chester High. It's a Saturday, I It's a think. Saturday. Okay. All right. You called me. Yeah. You booked me for that. That'll be a... Well, hopefully we'll be at the stage someday we can get both of the stands open. Yeah, both I want to do that. Can I they do wanna, it? They, should, they, they, should, they should. They should do I'm, it. Now. Yeah, we'll do it then. I'm okay. just going to do a sweep and a new going to be, you know, yeah. and you'll so, see, you'll see. Uh, how the banners looking up there? Because they, they look nice. Are they updated? The 1,000 point scores? Oh, I thought you meant the Central League. And ones. the Central League, it's, okay. The Central All League right, ones okay. are up, but I don't, I don't think the banners are up yet. So, okay. And Not the floor yet. looks good. Yeah, yes. The floor. It's the same. They just had homecoming, so I hope it still looks nice. Right. And that was a, whew, what a game that was. You go to the football games? I do, I do but I didn't meet home. Oh, man. Yeah, Marple Newtown. So with Marple Newtown beating Strathaven on a field goal at the end of the game, 23-20, mm -hmm. they're 7-1. and one. Both teams are 7-1. and one. Chester with that huge win over 6A Downingtown West, who had seven wins. Chester's now first. In the District 1 5A rankings football. We're going to talk about that with Dennis. <laughs> now, if they can stay focused, we got two tough Del Valle League teams coming up. I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, we got Chai Chester, the rival, and they're 5 and 3 this year with their new coach. They were 1 and 9 last year, and we got Academy Parks, Academy Park. So, but Chester could end up the top seed, and they would host at least three games in the district one tournament. You got to win the games. You got to, you got to win the game. So we'll yeah. get, so hopefully, yeah. And uh, you had the experience last year of going to a district one game. Yes. A playoff game. So tell us about that game last year. That gym was so loud. I they loved rocking? it. And I think I forget who you guys played up there. Upper Moreland. Oh, up there. Okay. It yeah. was, it was, the game was so exciting and it felt so good. Um, you know, the first half we were actually only down by three. Right. And, our biggest thing was, you know, we just we just had to get a little bit tougher, honestly. We had to get a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. You know, we were trying to tell the girls, go over every screen, they shoot. You have to go over screens, you have to fight through. And we did that successfully in the first half. Right. Second half, I don't know, you know, but things happen. The game kind of got away from us. So Upper Moreland, that's in, Val uh, that's in uh, the Fort Washington area, I believe. Something like Upper Moreland, because I want it's up there. Huh? Yeah, I want to see how they did the rest of the the way. Upper Moreland, because I've got my little phone. Upper Moreland. All those girls could shoot the lights out. Girls basketball. Oh yeah. So from a range. Yeah. Like deep, deep threes. So last year, because I like to you know, get a perspective on, you know, how the team that you played. Did after that, so that Strathaven made the playoff. They were twenty. They ended up twenty and seven. Okay. Matt Carroll was the head coach, or is the head coach. So played us Strathaven. I said us. We're hanging, and then they played um, oh Gwynedd Mercy, mm -hmm. and they had to run into the private schools, and they lost forty eight thirty four. Then they beat East, then Mount St Joseph. They beat them constantly. I'm just telling you how that. Yeah. And then they had a, they went to the states. But they open up with another private school, Bethlehem Catholic, wow. who beat them 46-36. So that's, it's tough when you're... you're but you know what? That gives me a glimpse of the possibilities. First half, we were only down by three. Exactly. So you win, they lost 
because they got a, you get a consolation if you win that first game. Even if you lose the second round, you'll get a consolation game. So yeah, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, who else is on your schedule this year besides the non-league games? That- Upper Moreland. We play Upper oh, Moreland again. Up, up there. Yeah. Oh, good. We okay. go to them again. Um, Downingtown West. Downingtown East. Uh, always pretty tough. I mean, the Downingtown basketball, you know, goes way back. They've, yeah. they've had some big, big, big time programs. Bob Schnoor's, a couple state championships. When they were Downingtown, right. they split in 2000. That's right. You were out of town. Yeah. 2003, I don't know. Yeah, you were still a you know, little young. So 2003, that's... Get straight here. Summer 2003, it's split from Downingtown to Downingtown East and West. Okay. So that's where they, they've they been around their 21st year. There's more history for you. Wow. You surprised how much I know here? No, yeah. I'm actually not surprised. Okay. I feel like you just, you know a lot. Yeah, yeah. Been a, been I know a, that you know a lot. And it's, it was great working in central PA in Virginia to get another perspective. And just like you living out in Seattle. Yeah. Are they the, nor- the great Northwest? More laid back out there, more rain. Is that true or is that just uh, It's definitely true, but I always say this comparison. The East Coast is scrunched like this mm-hmm. and everybody's in a rush and has an attitude. The West Coast is open and everyone is just walking their own walk and minding their business. It's really nice. Central PA is similar. Central PA, yeah, kind of similar. You know, the coal region and stuff like yeah. that. So. But the rain, you know what? In the summertime, it would go like 90 days with no rain. Are we getting comments here? Can you see the comments here, Brandy? I'm, let's see. Because people can actually chime in. And Shout out. Chester Clippers are on uh, fire. Okay, go. Go birds. Go. Yeah, okay, go birds. all right. So, hmm. yeah, anyway. Well, we'll see what happens with the Eagles rest of the year. All right, so again, Brandy Johnson. Oh, you are got to talk about your grandfather. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jumbo. Yeah, I mean, I truthfully didn't understand the impact he had on people until maybe like two to three years ago, truthfully. Jumbo Johnson, folks. Yeah, you know, actually it was so funny because my memories that I have with my pup pup, he always gave me money every time I saw him. So at his funeral, me and my dad, we viewed, we saw him, the casket was open and I made him go back. I said, dad, I have to put a dollar in his pocket because he always gave me money. So I put a dollar in his pocket mm-hmm. and it's still in his pocket to this nice. day. Legend, uh, so he, so he, he followed you, obviously, in college. My Well, he passed away when I was in, like, first grade. Oh, you thought? Oh, yeah. That's unbelievable. That so young, yeah. Wow. But his I had that article, 1988 article, mm-hmm. you know, and did, did you ever see that before I posted it? Or you have it on, do you guys have it in the archives? No. The well, family archives? I actually, the first time I saw it was when you posted it, and I was like... Oh, th- Shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, it's right. amazing. Right. I didn't get a chance to talk to you too much at the games. I'd see you, give you fist pumps, yeah. you and just, uh, uh, Patience Jones, she, uh, the, she's part of the Jones family. Her yeah. brother's Ike, Mark, okay, and um, the nephew, she is, uh, she moved on to another program, you said, or not another program, another. No, uh, she, she kind of had the same angle as Chrissy. Um, she has young daughters, and I know oh, okay. that she definitely wants to be in those prime years of their life. Are they in the Strathaven district? No, they actually moved. They moved like 40 minutes out. So the commute oh. was a little tough. Where they go to school? Because uh, I was just... I'm not, work, I'm oh, not yeah. quite sure. Yeah, I'm not quite it's sure. It's always nice to... Yeah, because we have the, yeah. the, the blood with the Mulherns. I don't know if they have any girls coming up or mm-hmm. something like that. But I know they have some boys coming up. But yeah, the bloodlines here are unbelievable. Yeah, Patience Jones, amazing. Yeah. She was oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. I got, found stuff on her. Yeah. And uh, Harry, the father, legend. He's amazing, too. Oh, yeah. Harry, unbelievable. And the... Um, Back to Jumbo Johnson, so much at the, the, the we call it the little palestra, the uh, in media, the media Lewis, youth center. Yeah, Lewis Jumbo Johnson Media Youth Center. Oh, th- there it is. When did they name it after him? Um, they did that last year. Last year, it was probably, I want to say mid January, closer to February ish when they did that. Okay, so his, there was in that 88 article, it said he had two sons that were 11 and 12. Yes. So was, that, was, that, was that one of those be your dad? My dad is the oldest brother. There's one of, there's four brothers and one sister. Okay. So my dad is Lewis. He's the oldest. Then Tony Johnson. 
Tony, did he play ball? I don't. If he did, he I don't. He's mm. probably a scrub. I don't a scrub. Know. <laughs> did your dad play ball? <laughs> he was probably a scrub too. <laughs> so where'd you get it from? Um, I think the other side of it, they were always great coaches. Oh, okay. You know, so I think that's where I got it from. Wanting mm -hmm. to learn the game and just being competitive in general. I had an older sister growing up, and everything was a competition. Like Mom. everything, yeah. She did a great job with the boys. Yeah. Program. I hope she gets back into it. Yeah. You know, she's taking her time to herself and just coming back to the center of everything. But she's right. still working up at the boys club. You know, she still has that always and forever. You know? So what's it going to be like? A oh, Pencrest Strathaven. What's that going to be like? Because <laughs> I mean, so much from I'm trying to get this word out. familiar, being so familiar with each other. So that's one word I just cannot get. My uncle Larry is actually the head coach. Oh man, Christ. Larry Johnson, yes. Yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah, he's a pretty good coach, man. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's, pretty, so he's good. What's that gonna be like? It's gonna be really fiery and intense. Definitely, yeah. I'm gonna over scream everything so, he says, just like I did last year. Who are you scrimmaging? The, who, who do you have in the preseason? We, so we have two scrimmages. There's a Catholic school that we played against last year. Um, Let me yeah. look it up. I'm going to look up Max Preps. Yeah. We, I'm not quite sure. Sacred Heart? Oh, small school. If yeah. that's, if that's. I don't think, it's, it's a day, something day school. I've n honestly never heard of them before, but our so, schedule, you know, it's, I'm looking for another scrimmage, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Strathaven. Okay. Girls basketball. We'll be joined by Dennis Shaw shortly here. Yeah, so more time to talk with Brandy till we get here. Definitely to need another scrimmage. Yeah. We reached out to a few schools, so we're just waiting to hear back. Right. Strathaven girls basketball. There you go. And, uh, they got to update their max preps here. All right, previous seasons. So um, it's a day school. It's I'm trying to think when do you. Uh, there you go. Um, yeah, they have you a five and eight. You won more games than that last year. So the max preps, the max yeah. preps. So uh, schedule last year, um, you played Academy Park, you beat them. So this is what it's on max preps here. Yeah. Sun Valley, Harriton, Downingtown East, uh, Pencrest. I think I announced that game. Won that, uh, that was one of the games I yeah. did. Upper Darby, Lower Mary, Garnet Valley, Harriton, Marple Newtown. Yeah, they probably don't have it on there. Springfield, Chester. There's Upper Moreland. They don't have it. On it's a it's a cat. I'm pretty sure it's a Catholic school, and yeah. I've never heard of this school before. How's Laura Marion looking? Laura Marion, honestly, I we when I coached JV, mm -hmm. our games were always very intense. So I'm actually kind of excited to play Laura Marion mm -hmm. because, for example, last year we lost buzzer beater one point. It was a three-pointer, Liza Uregi. It would have tied the game, but the ref said something different. It was inching into the varsity no game. No review. I'm it was inching into the varsity game, and they just wanted it to end. Did you look? You, I'm sure you looked at the I film. did. And how many seconds before? The no, she. they said that her foot was on the line, and it absolutely was not on the line. They counted it as a two. But you know what? One of my mantras is I'm going to let the refs do what they need to do, and I'm not going to bother them. I'm not going to hunt them down after a game for something yeah. like that. But back to Lower Marion, mm -hmm. my first year coaching against Lower Marion, we went into triple overtime. And this year is very special because those girls I went into triple overtime with that fought till the end are my seniors this year. There you go. So there you go. I know they're going to be ready for all those games. They're going to remember everything we've been through. And they want to win. At the historic Strathaven Gymnasium in Wallingford, right off of Providence Road. Built, uh, if I have the article, I think it was 7071. It was December of 70. Wow. And they held a boys basketball showcase. I was 13 years old. I remember going to the game. And I always wanted, I started, get, my broadcast idol was legendary flyer, play-by-play -play guy, Gene Hart. He was the announcer when they won the two Stanley Cups back in the day, the Broad Street Bullies. I feel like I'm probably, you know, 1973, 74 seems like yesterday to me. 
And you maybe, no, you're too young for that also. But yeah. anyway, so I wanted Gene Hart. So that the game was on the radio. Carl Mall was the announcer. I had it on 1590 AM. It's still around, but it's a Spanish radio station now. So I was there and I sat with him one of the games and I no, no, nobody recorded it, but I remember there and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, it was a, a Christmas tour at that's the Strathaven. Oh, well, Nether Providence back then. So that's how old the gym is. But it looks good. You guys have done a, a tremendous job keeping it up to date. Yeah, it is really nice now. Sound system's great. Yeah. Sound system's great. So well, you're, uh, yeah, you're ready to go. And um, any, th- any other uh, mentors you had growing you know, in the last you know, 10, 15 years uh, to get into the coaching field? Who else do you talk to? Um, I talked to Kate Pearson. She coached at Cabrini, and now she's with Rowan University. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, my dad, he's been somebody that, you know, he... Real quick, real quick. Yeah. Can you get the Dennis? I think he's at the door. Dennis Shaw? Okay. Okay, so... Yeah, um, also, again, like I told you, I was from the Pacific Northwest, you know. Oh, so you had contacts out there. Oh, definitely. My high school coach, John Ainsley, I think... He's what really sparked me to want to become a coach. I think it ignited in me during a game at some point. What high school out there? Bethel High School. How'd you guys do? Did you start freshman year? Freshman? So out there, it was different. There was junior high. So it went from sixth, sixth grade to ninth grade. Right. And then the high school was 10th through 12th. Right. So my sophomore year, I did start at Bethel High School. It was really cool. So. Same high school Allen Iverson went to. Bethel. Well, Bethel, Virginia. Coach Shaw's in the house. Have you ever met? Have you, do you, okay. Well, you're going to meet your first year head coaches. Yeah. And look what he's done this year. Right. What right. more can you say about that? So Brandy, first year, Strathaven High School, okay. girls basketball. Nice there you go. Too. Coach Shaw. So uh, we'll get you on again. I, like I did with, I have an open invitation for anybody that wants to come on this show. Just tell me, you know, anybody. <laughs> All right, so uh, update here with uh, Coach Sean Chester, and Brandy will get you on. So. All right. And everything's on YouTube, so I'll send you the link. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Brandy Johnson, first-year Strathaven girls basketball coach, the granddaughter of the great Jumbo Johnson. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Brandy. Thank you so Appreciate much for having it. me. And now you can go home and stress out over the Phillies. Over the Phillies. Oh, man. Is your, is your honey, is he that crazy? He? Does he, he drive you nuts, or is he? No, I mean, it's did, a good crazy. Did he I'm, ever smash a TV set in? Absolutely not. Right. Does he curse? Sometimes. I mean, at the game. Yeah, the oh, Michael Barkan did on the radio. So there you go. So he said, bull, whatever, after the game. My hero, I, one of my hero, Michael Barkan. I wish I could have his job. <laughs> it's like the, the teams win, he's so high, and we're going to go well. You know, they lose. I mean, you've seen the guys post game yeah. live, I'm sure. All right. But anyway, thank you very much. Of course. All right, Brandy, we'll do it again. All right. Sounds uh, keep good. in touch. Keep okay. in touch. And tell Linnell Mosley, your athletic director, I said hi. So we're going to slide Dennis Shaw right in here, and he can come over and give Brandy a fist pump. There you go, Dennis. You're ready to go, Dennis. Here we go. So uh, Dave Berman here, and there's Coach Shaw. All right. All right, there he is, Dennis Shaw. He's got a voice tonight, which is hard to believe after that the other day. Good to see you. Nice. I'm going to get an update. I'm taking this shirt. I'm going to take this shirt off now, Dennis. <laughs> I got my... Oh, whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, turn me up. There you go. Exit. Exit. You know what it is. Exit says. Okay. There's <laughs> delayed tape. There you go. I don't want to make sure I get revealed too much here. Oh, God. Not bad, Dennis, for 68. Or 60, no, I'm 65. I'm sorry. When you get in your sixes, you lose count. <laughs> All right, got my exit six. Finally got a chest. Che- I have some old school Chester shirts, but... Mm-hmm. Anyway, Dennis Shaw, first year head coach, Chester High. Everybody's talking, everybody's talking, but you don't want to get too high right. because Chai Chester is waiting in the wings. First of all, 7-1 and one this year, and let's kind of run down the season. Coming off an unbelievable winning, it's a very good 7-0. and oh. They are ranked number 9 in the state, 6A, coming into the game, Downingtown West. And um, first of all, let's talk about the season in general you uh, the great scrimmage with Imhotep right and then the Perkyoman Valley solid program and it was a um, 
a learning experience. Like Jalen Hurts said yesterday, live and learn. You, you learn from it, and you learn from you know, the loss to Perky Yeoman Valley. Uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, week one, coming off, no excuses, but coming off of a season uh, year where we lost 13 seniors, I think we kind of underestimated the transition for guys that were growing into that leader role week one and our expectation. I don't want to say it was too high, but – it was more so of what we've done versus what we're going to do, but um, I mean, we still, we still, we're still kind of upset about what happened with week one. So our mindset and a model that we preach to the kids and what the kids have been preaching is that everyone has to pay for week one. So that has pretty much catapulted us to where we are now. That's a good six eight team you played with a great coach, and Absolutely. I'm sure playing them help has helped you throughout the season including on saturday so then you had some tough games man a team you might meet in the district playoffs district 15a phoenixville that was a battle baby yeah phoenixville is a good team um last year when we played them they gave us a we beat them but they gave us a they gave us a nice little game so we've been on this well seven games eight games i don't know, seven game streak eight game streak i don't know yeah seven but in a row se yeah seven in a row so our guys are playing good football right now at the best time of the year then you beat both of the westchester or the best chest that westchester east and henderson on the road and that was that impre anytime you went on the road anytime you went anywhere yes. in this this state yeah. of pennsylvania especially going on the road like yeah. out to um montgomery county or whatever playing out of league it's yeah. always tough um but like i said we got on the road we handle business um two good programs but we're good as well got so. it done all right the, the downingtown west game but the, let's uh, size that milano's a legend mike's been there all 21 years it used to be just downingtown high and then they split downingtown east and west i'm actually on pa announcer friday night downingtown east okay. taking on coatesville which should be a good and one. coatesville's got to win that game banged up a little bit but anyway got to win that game to at least host a game in the 6A the District 1, yeah. And then the week after that, it's Downingtown East and Downingtown West. So we'll see what happens. But Downingtown West, and it was, uh, they had like four, at least four Division One recruits. They yes. had very well coached. And uh, you guys were poised. Uh, you had 13 penalties, but I still poised. And uh, just, you, look, you looked like a, a senior leading team the way you played. Yeah, um, we prepared. We had a great week of practice. Um, we got in the film room, started with the coaches. The coaches put together a great game plan, offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, and the kids were up for the challenge, understanding that down in town beat us last year. And uh, we didn't go out and present ourselves the way that we usually do. So it was pretty much a bad game for us last year. So this game was circled on our schedule since they beat us last year. I never saw, I didn't see any film of that game. And I didn't see, I just saw the articles on the game it was a uh -huh. relatively close game they were very good again last year down in town west yeah. but this year's game the sportsmanship from what i could see from my angle was incredible yes. guys picking each other up and yeah. just you know just you know, a little last bit. year yeah. last year to your point um last year things got a little out of hand at their place and um it was just completely different anytime obviously like teams come traveling to chester there's, there's certain things that's going to happen that's not going to happen when you're in Chester. So it's like okay. sportsmanship wise, both sides, it's displayed good sportsmanship. Um, like last year was no band. It was, the band was playing during the game. Um, the mm. players were simulating snaps. So it was just like a lot of that stuff, no excuses. Like they went out and won the game, but a lot of those things weren't a part of the game this year. And it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a different, different outcome. You're playing so many kids too, and a lot of younger kids. Yes. But the senior leadership, you want to talk? Even Kyron Staples, yes. I gave him a shout today. Yeah. He has just been unbelievable for you yes. guys, and hopefully he'll get a chance. He can be maybe like what Reese Hoskins is to the Phillies. Uh -huh. Come back late in the year. Yeah. He's missed the whole year. Called injury. Kyron is our leader. He's been our leader. Um, we know his situation. He's been injured for two for two years. It's unbelievable. Um, but he still leads the guys. He's at practice every single day. He doesn't miss a practice. He doesn't miss a game. And uh, he's our coach 
amongst the players. So he keep those guys in check. He let them know when they're doing wrong. He let them know when they should be paying attention, when they should be following the rules. So just having that guy around. Uh, he's a selfless kid, obviously. He's at practice every day. He doesn't even play. He's not playing right now. But just having that kid around is just like it speaks volumes. And we love Kyra. Love the picture I put on there. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think it was Yes God who took it uh, of Dotson, your fab freshman yeah, number 55, yeah. and Kyron just talking with him yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and that's uh, Alonzo Lewis, the legendary right, coach for right, Chester. That's his grandson. Right. Yep. Great to talk to mom and so much history there. Yep, yep. So, um, like you said, uh, Dotson comes from a, a lineage, a great lineage of athletes. Um, he's going to be a big time player. He still has to mature, but he plays. He plays. He played a lot for us Saturday. Like he plays in spurts, and we're expecting big things from him. You put a lot of pressure on their quarterback. Absolutely. That was huge. Dom Toy. Good to see him fired up uh -huh. and under control at the same time. Yeah. Um, our guys, like I said, man, our guys had a little little bit of an edge coming into the game. Um, they're, they had the, our guys read the article about the quarterback the day before they released a big time article about how good he was and they wanted to go out and prove a point like man right, right. he he got his stuff off against everybody else but when you like today against Chester we got something to say about it yeah so and he's a hell of they a play player. well and their quarterback yeah. is good yeah, Quinn, uh, Quinn Hennigan, I want to yeah. say he's the old Dominion recruit yes. or commit uh, he's good but we was able to get after him uh, we saw some things prior to. The, prior to us playing them, we went and scouted their game versus Coatesville. We felt like Coatesville should have won the game realistically. They've done some things that we wanted to implement and uh, take advantage of some areas that we could have taken advantage of, and we did. Yeah, and, oh, man, I would love someday if we could play Coatesville again. I, <laughs> that game a couple years ago was awesome, yeah, and the was, Coatesville was, people was, loved it. Yeah, it was. And yeah, there, our kids would love playing in that stadium, too, right, out there. So, um, all right, so 7-1. and one. Dennis Shaw here, your coaching staff, these guys, you guys are working together and, and you're so passionate out there and you, you try to plead with the referees. I know how you feel, uh -huh. but anyway, uh, you're, 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 you're doing a hell of a job. Right. And um, like never want to harp too much on officiating because at the end of the day, you got to coach the game and the players got to play. So we always preach to the, we always preach to the kids like, man, we gotta, we gotta go out and play decisively and, make the score decisive so that you take the referees out of the game. Um, some mistakes, some penalties are warranted, some are not. A lot of things are happening because you're, they're, most times they're just over-policing and over-officiating Chester. Like, it is what it is. Everyone knows that. But, um, I mean, it's an uphill battle. We fighting, but we keep fighting. We're not going to let the referees dictate our wins and our losses. Like, yeah, a touchdown might get called back, but we're nowhere good enough to – come right back two, three plays later and, and get a touchdown. Can we run down the staff again, your coaching staff? Yeah, I mean, so, Sam, Sam Anthony, that's Mr. Intensity right yeah, there. Yeah, so um, we got Sam Anthony, uh, uh, Anthony Moss, who's, um, who's our defensive coordinator. Um, we have Lamar Shaw, who's our offensive coordinator. We have Darnell Mews, who's as our quarterbacks. Uh, Edward Nelson, who has our safeties. Laquan Robinson, who has our corners. Uh, Evan Johnson, who has our linebackers, Daki Green, who has our D line, O line, um, uh, Coach Jay Scott, who has our wide receivers, uh, Coach McCarthy, who helps out with our line. McCarthy, um, and who's the other guy that were, they were in the stands? Yeah, they were sitting right Yeah, next I believe to me. that was Coach Evan. Okay. Yeah, that was Coach Evan. I, I, I got one of those guys, how can you guys stay so calm yeah, up here? Yeah, well, they're, 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 the, they're, the, they're two of the more calmer guys on the staff. So Even J-Mac? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought he'd be crazy, yeah. man. Okay, so anyway, but yeah. But, but and of course, good. obviously, the legendary Coach Peach, Peach, who's watching. He told me to let you know he'll be watching. I got to get him on the show. <laughs> yeah, I got to get him yeah, on the show. Yeah. Anyway, so me and him were talking, animated at halftime, and he, he's right down there. He sees this stuff, and he's seen how much... Can you believe what he's seen over 30 years, yes, 40 yeah, years? Yeah, and he helps us out. He's a tremendous help. He's a great guy to have around. He knows his history. He knows the ins and outs of Delville football, Pennsylvania football as a whole. So just having a, we call him the OG, just having an OG around, which what was considered a younger staff, which we are, yeah. just having him around and, and getting those jewels from him. We learn a lot from him. He helps us out every single day. So just, just keeping him around is like, it's, 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 it's pivotal to what we have going yeah, on. Yeah, he said biggest win, everybody was asking me, even Joey Santa Laquito right, from the right, news, right. biggest win, and the miracle win against, unfortunately we didn't make the playoffs that year, we thought we had it, Academy Park. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. That was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We hadn't beaten him in like 10 years, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was, 
we, we were six A. Unfortunately, well, we were six A. We ended up yeah, seven and three. Up, yeah, yeah. So that was a big win. Enough, unbelievable yeah. win. Uh-huh. That was unbelievable. Yeah. But the, the old heads, the Glenn Mills yeah, game. Yeah, I read the I read the article on, on e- the Glenn Mills. Game. ESPN was yeah, there, yeah, and you yeah. probably know. I, it's, I just try to recycle what I can. Right. I had to put that picture. You winning the championship. <laughs> what year was that again? 2000? That was two thousand and six. That's 2006, crystal, 2007. Crystal yeah. clear picture. Yeah. yeah. About what West Catholic yeah. High School. So yeah. you know what it's like in the Catholic League, too. Absolutely. All right. So can we run down? Let's focus. Um, we're not going to run down every player uh-huh. because I'd love to, you know, but you're playing so many guys. I'm going to throw out the, all right, the twins. Let's. And Deron Harris is doing an unbelievable job as a punter. Yes, he is. Uh, Deron is our most versatile player. Um, he's another one of our leaders. Uh, like you said, punter, wide receiver. He's got snaps at running back where he's been successful. He's thrown touchdowns this year. He's had interceptions. He's had punt return touchdowns. He's had kick return touchdowns. So he's just been phenomenal. Uh, with Jalen, I'm more impressed at his. I'm more impressed at his maturity, understanding that you're coming off of an all-state season, and you're statistically you're not where you were, but understanding that. Our run game is what has gotten us to this point. So he's been patient, and I've been, I'm impressed with him, like, watching. Of course, every kid wants to be the guy that make things go. And he still is. Obviously, he's the mm-hmm. quarterback. But he's been turning around more often. I think Saturday we threw the ball. We only threw the ball 10, 11 times right, right. for about 20 yards. So it's like – but he's hot. So when a running back scores, he's the first one in the end zone chest pumping and – fist pumping and celebrating the guy's touchdown. So I've been more impressed with him in that aspect. You're damn right, man. I'm telling you what, he was he was calm. Yeah. He was like a veteran out there. That was great to see. And Duran, they're so, ninth, tenth graders. Tenth it's graders. unbelievable. Yes. yes. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Larry McDaniel. Yes. So Larry's a guy that's going to be, um, I mean, we know what Larry can do. I watched Larry play since he was nine years old. Um, we know what he could do. He's going to be a guy for us along with uh, the other running backs we have with Deshaun Jackson and Irene Melvin when it comes down to the playoffs. Man, playoff football is about running the ball. Mm -hmm. It's about manhandling teams. It's about who can just turn around when it's cold. The guys on the other side don't want to tackle. Who who, who could turn around and and, and hand the ball and be productive running the ball? And we have four guys that we believe that can get the job done. And Jarrell Palmer being that fourth guy. Oh, he's just, he just wants to make a tackle on every yes, play. Yes, he's only yes. a so- another one, only 10 Another grade. one, a sophomore. He leads 5A, and um, he, leads, he leads District 1 in tackles in the entire state. So It's, it's unbelievable. Yes, yes. I know he's got over, probably over 100 Yes, now. over 100, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, Shamar Williams doing a good job. Yep. Are you getting better as the year goes on? Yeah, he's Shamar, go- Shamar actually had his best, Shamar actually had his best game. Um, he had his best game this past weekend. Like he made some, he made some impactful tackles. He forced a fumble on what was lo- looking like a promising scoring drive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got, like you said, we play a lot of younger guys. So uh, those guys are young, but we play a lot of younger guys like um, Zion Santana. We call him Ziggy. He's been like he played a lot for us this past weekend. He's a ninth grader. He's I want to say he's still 13 or just turned 14, wow. actually, two weeks ago, I, I believe. I, excuse me, what but position? I he plays He plays linebacker. He plays D, he plays D line. He plays O line for us. How could I miss him? He okay. actually was in the game blocking their best defensive lineman, which was uh, number 18, a senior on down in town who's committed to play to Richmond. He, Maine, um, I think Maine? Or is that Richmond? Richmond. Okay. The wide receiver's going to Maine. They had one going to A. Yeah, okay. So, right. um, so yeah. but Ziggy sprung, he sprung a touchdown. He sprung a touchdown against against a senior. So, like those I guys. I should have called his name out. Yeah, it was yeah, he was number twenty eight. Yeah, twenty eight. You probably you probably, oh, you probably just didn't see him. He's a small. He's he's a small. He's smaller in stature, but like his his heart and like he's he's going to be that guy as well. Dotson, fifty five. Yes, another freshman. freshman. Yes, another uh, freshman. The, uh, and um, man, I'm telling you, Damon Fitzgerald. Yes, fourteen uh-huh. sophomore, and he. Uh, he just his mom was sitting right in front of me okay and we just so impressed his blocking yeah he is he was doing some great blocking on yeah. those guys he's another one Simon's another one like i said he's going to be a guy um he has maturing to do um as we all do it's a transition it's a transition for him um damon damon's damon's been great for us he's been a great addition for us on both sides of the ball so like i said man we 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 
We're loaded, but at the end of the day, man, you got to go out there and play the game. Kwame Qu- Eric, a senior? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Cosby? Turtle, yeah, we call him Turtle. Turtle's another one. Um, you just know what you're going to get from him. He doesn't talk. He doesn't say too much, but you know what you're going to get from him on game day, and that's 100% every single snap. I'm trying to throw out some of the, uh, the, the, the Stephen Dale. Stephen yes. Dale. Yeah, so Sko, Sko's a, uh, he's like a hybrid guy for us, like, Position when it's when it comes to positionless football, positionless football, that's what he excels at, and he's made some tremendous plays for us. Um, like he he blocked a punt, he returned a, a fumble, uh, an interception for a touchdown against Westchester Henderson. So he's that guy where yo, when it's time for positionless football, we want to get after the quarterback, we want to put our speed package in. He's been our guy, and he's been flourishing in that role. Okay, now Re, Melvin. I mean, we you know we can go on and on yes, here. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm just looking to see. We can go a little bit long. A couple, a few minutes. Okay, okay. And uh, now Re, Melvin. I call his name out a lot. And he's a lot of passion. Uh huh. Yeah. So, uh, not like you said, a lot of passion. Plays with a lot of heart. Um, stepped up at corner big time this year. Another kid who has a lot of maturing to do, um, but he's been he's been a guy for us. He'll continue he'll continue to to, to be a guy for us. Running the ball, like we're not going to get where we're going without guys like like I said like with him without him and and uh, uh, McDaniel's and I'm trying to guys. think of another senior out there because I just these guys are mean. So the much lineman, man, we got to give you got to give yeah. some love yeah, to yeah, the yeah, lineman. Okay, uh, like, we got, well, offense first. Yes, off like up front, like we. We have a senior center who did an outstanding job. Uh, Dolo, we call him Dolo. Uh, Jerry Young, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Johnson, who did a phenomenal job this week. And we got uh, Tills Zane Tillery, who's a junior. Right. Like right. up front, we did a we did a tremendous job. I think we rushed for 276 yards, and their coach attested to it. Like those guys did with no other team has been able to do, which was run the ball. And that's just a testament to the guys up front. Well, Mike Milano, when his quote said he has experience, uh, did you ever, oh, you meant it before, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He has experience of coaching against Chester, right. and he just said it's a little different now. I mean, in, yes, in a good yeah. way. In a good, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, good uh, his quotes, because uh, uh, down in town east, they were, they were in the house. Right, they were, absolutely. They were, they were yeah, checking yeah, them out, yeah, and they yeah. were, so um, we don't have, we don't, we're not playing them yet, maybe yeah. down the road mm-hmm. in a couple of years. Who knows what? But we'll focus one game at a time here. So, right. yeah, the defensive line. Wow, the pressure. Dom Toy, yes. uh, yeah, among yeah. others. So, uh, Dom, obviously, we know Dom is a guy. He had a big time uh, sack fumble, which we recovered in the end zone. They Sean Jackson actually lined up at in a lot and gave their um, gave their tackle fits just with his speed. He recovered the fumble. He had some key uh, had some key sacks. He also caused a lot of holdings that uh, forced those guys back. Um, who else up front? Uh, well, we already spoke about Damon. Um, yeah, man. So the win was huge for us. Obviously, it puts us at the number number one seed for now. We'll see how this thing plays out. Um, uh, there's already Chai's already talking. So yeah, I mean, well, we're not where like this. <laughs> I know. They're it's, le- it's, it's They're levels, Dave. It's, it's, I, it's, I it's, it's levels. I, 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 I get the trash talk. I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. It's levels, right. like. Like I said, are we are? I mean, not that we're not respecting any opponent, but it's 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 levels and so they um, <laughs> coach has done a good job for them. Oh yeah, absolutely, friends. absolutely. And uh, and I like their coach. Their coach is cool. So they got I think they got five wins this year. It's a step up from last year. They, they some, I think last year they only won one game. They're playoff bound this year, but like I said, it's levels. So right. it's always like a close. <laughs> it's always <laughs> like a cl- you go back to the nineties, right? Uh, always like a close game. In the last few years, you know, it, it's always a battle. Yeah. So it, well, last these year kids was, are- last year was twenty four zero. So yeah, and um, we won't. Focus on Academy Park. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. How's the? Yeah. Uh, seems like everybody's healthy, ready to roll. And and that's the key thing. Um, we're all healthy. We had a, we were banged up real, real, real early. Like we were banged up. We had guys out. Actually, I think Dom missed three games. We had a bunch of guys like we were banged up, but we're 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 in rare form right now. We're healthy, which is the most important part. We're playing our best football going into the playoffs. And like I said, man, we hold this number one seed down and. Road to the districts comes through exit six, and that has never ever happened. No. So right now, like we're paying attention to the standings. The only thing, only team that we believe get past us is Marple, and that's if they win against Garnet Valley. Oh, hell of a win uh, by them. Hell of a win. We a win we needed. Yeah. Like they're a win. They're a win. <laughs> that's right. They're a win. <laughs> Gave Straff their first loss, and yeah. we knew that. All right. Well, if we handle business Saturday, 
we now jump to the one yeah. seed. So it yeah. was a lot of it was a lot it was a lot of different components that played into our enthusiasm for Saturday. Imaj so. Barrett. Yes, Imaj. Imaj. Private Chester Ch uh, Charter. Uh, CCSA I mean. kid. Yeah, Imaj has been playing huge. Imaj is a sticker. Um, Got to be a little bit more focused in the pass game, but you know what you're going to get from him: aggressiveness, athleticism. So he's been a guy, a senior. He's been he's been a guy for us as well. Anybody else, real quick? I mean, because I really want to. Yeah, uh, I'll be. I mean, it's so many guys. Yeah, I like, know. I know. There's so many guys. Um, a lot of the guys like that don't start. That just that are just phenomenal guys. Guys like Jayon Burton. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of guys, man, that just throughout the course of the week to practice, like mm -hmm. they're just leading by example every single day, understanding that we can't do anything if our if we don't have all 45, 50 guys. So when it comes to scout team, when it comes to uh, uh, um, just 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 replicating what other teams want to do, we have guys that show up every single day. They may not be starters, but they show up every single day and give us the looks that we need, give us what we're asking for, and those guys are – just as, if not as more important than the guys that are starting. So I always shed light on those guys and let them know, like, yo, you're appreciated. When your number come, your number be ready when your number is when your number is called. But you are there's no there's no, all fifty guys on this roster are important. That was my man Ken Santello coming. <laughs> Ken That's is our that, guy. That, He's yeah. the man. Yeah, Ken is the man. Ken is the man. He's been around. Trainer, trainer. Been around. Right. He's our trainer. He's been around a long time. He knows a lot about the game. And he just sit back and he's encouraged. He's in key. He encourages the guys every single day. Chester so. cheerleaders, man. Chester cheerleaders. Of course, you can't go without the Chester cheerleaders. How about Gator and the guys, yeah. the food stand? Yeah, Gator. Yeah, Gator. Everybody, everybody play a role, man. Yeah. Understanding that, listen, man, Chester football is Chester football is becoming a household name. There's still work to do. Um, where we at where we're at now is not where we intend to be. But understanding that we're a step closer than what we were, there's still work to do. But you can't you can't not acknowledge the transition that has happened over the past couple of years. And we get people like people call me all the time. People reach out to us all the time. I was like, gonna yeah, ask, you, yeah, your buddies. You, I mean, after 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 Saturday's game, I probably got about eight nine coaches just from all over the state that just called and like, yo, like that's a huge win for the program. You guys held it down. Of course, everybody wants. Because they all want to beat, they all right. want to beat downtown. Right. So, like, we understand anybody from that. Coatesville? Uh, nah, nah, nah. No, I from Coatesville. <laughs> they had like a little issue. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they had a so, good game though. I was at their yeah. game. They had a good game. Well, they didn't play downtown West last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Whatever. So it just, it, thank goodness. And Downingtown East missed a game. Academy Park. That was That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna hurt. A Downingtown absolutely. East. Points? Absolutely. And it's unfortunate. Like it's unfortunate, but yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, so it got the, a lot covered. Oh, Dion is your cousin. Dion is my brother. Or the Dion is your uh -huh, brother. Yeah. Right, Dion, Lamar. Lamar is and my Rashad cousin. Is, Rashad is my cousin Okay, well. so he yeah. just gave me a friend. I thought I was uh -huh. friends on, yeah. anyway, on Facebook. <laughs> All right, so Dion, is he coaching at Roman or Imho? Dion is at Imhotep. Was he at Roman before? He was at Roman last season. All right, season. so I asked him who's, well, Love to see them. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually was just on the phone with uh for like two hours yesterday with their coaches, just busting it up. The, the MOT with coaches. MOTEP okay. coaches. So, right. like, those are our guys. Understanding that they set the precedent for their charter, but they're still somewhat yeah. a public school, yeah. but not really because they recruit. But understanding that they face some of the same. They face some of the same stuff that we got. Romans going getting on ready. Kids. That's gonna be yeah. That's gonna be a uh, last year was close. That yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna that's gonna be a good one. Like that's gonna that's gonna be a good one between them. Dion says are. Gonna, <laughs> I was he said so he said Imhotep is gonna yeah. Well, of yeah, course that was yeah. with Imhotep. Yeah. All right, but we gotta handle business. I told I, yesterday I was like, man, y'all handle business. We handle business. Yeah. Don't lose to teams that we we have no business losing to in the playoffs. And man, we meet up again. And this time there's game plan and that's intact. And we 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 see how that go. Apple, Apple, Tony Apicella Stadium, Apicella, Hazelton guy, by the way, legendary coach. That's where okay. you're going to be, one o'clock on okay. that. So, how do you, is it going to be, is there going to be talk? You know, I would imagine, because when a couple of years ago we lost to Coatesville, uh -huh. close game. Uh -huh. And then we played, and you know, there was a lot of trash talk in that game with Chichester. Yeah, next well, game, the, 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 kids, the, they, kids know, the kids know each other. A lot of them grew up with each other. It takes away from we the call, game, we call, we call Chichester our little brothers because, in a sense, that's what they are. It's, I, guess, I guess we formulated a little bit of a, of a rivalry, but listen, man, it's... it's you got to try to tune it out. Yeah, like, and, and yeah. It's, it's, it's levels. Like, 
respect to respect to the program, but yeah. it's, it's it's levels. Okay. So Saturday, Saturday is their um, Saturday is their homecoming as well. Ooh. So it'll be a packed house out there. Yeah. Every I mean when when you when not to not to say it like with a sort of sense of cockiness, but I try to tell the guys like when you become popping, like people want to be mentioned with you. Everyone wants to be mentioned with. The, the the team that has it going on, the team that's popping. So they get their first they get their first shot at Chester after Chester coming off of their biggest win in history. So I'm pretty sure those guys are going to be fired up. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's going to be like I said, it's going to be packed house up there. But man, we coming in with the mindset we're going to handle business, and that's just what it is. Yes, our, our guys, our guys, it's football. We're going to handle our business on a gridiron, keep it at that, and let 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 them know like it's it's, it's levels and yeah. So you're. Uh, how, how can you? How can you sleep? Sleeping good. You get rest at night or? You know? Nah, I'm usually up at like four in the morning. But but. <laughs> what time you have to get comes, up? It comes with it. I get up at like I get up at six. So so two hours but it comes a night. Game day. Game day. Game day. Game day. I'm never. I'm never. I'll probably get a little nap in from about let's say ten to like two or three, and then. It's, 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 it's game day. Like, it's, it's, well, Dante's uh, very calm this year. It's good. Yeah. He's yeah. just got to worry to deal with the, the tents. And, right, right, you know, right, right, right. And hopefully we get a new press box someday. Yeah, hopefully. You know, hopefully, so that's another hopefully. thing. But, uh, yeah, Stefan Roots, he did a little Oh, yeah, article. he did his little. He did his little. So, uh, Coach Dennis uh, Shaw, thank you very much, Absolutely. man. You already know, I, Dave. You already I know. Got. I hey, Dave. There was some, oh, okay. I, that's, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> okay. It is tough to be on that. On a panel. It's tough. It's tough. Because I... A lot of Marple people, they, they like me, the Marple Newtown people. I got to predict Strathaven. You got to predict Strathaven. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know? it's all, it's all. You uh, know, but I predicted Chester to win. And um, it's hard to believe I was the only one, though. Yeah. That's really ugly. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not mad that, like, the kids, the kids, of course, the kids use they went it nuts. as like a. Yeah, I forget. But we're not mad. Like, we, yeah. we respect, we like, we're not mad that people picked a yeah. team that was 7 and 0 right. and a good program and 6A, and and 6A. 6A to beat us. Yeah. But I'm not mad at that. Like, no. but. I mean, we're going to prove you wrong. But everybody, the videos were like, the kids are really happy. Oh, yeah, the man. kids, because like, the kids, it was it was bulletin board material, so to speak, for the kids. Whoa. Like, they highlighted, they circled that, oh, yo, look, everybody picked us to lose. All right. I told you, it was a lot of, it was a lot of, a lot of points going into to, to, to Saturday's game. Yeah. But at um, the end of the day, man, you got to play football. Yeah. So, so I'm going to, you know, it will be predicting again. Right. Well, that is Terry. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny. They just, always get, they always get, they always get riled up when Chester guys pick against Chester. And that's natural. Like, it, it, like whatever. Oh, like, Derek's on there. Yeah. You know, I got to, I'm not going to say his last yeah, name. Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah, he does a great job get, with yeah. the website, man. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, puts yeah, a lot yeah. of my old uh, yeah. school stuff on there too. Yeah, so nothing wrong with that. All right. Dan, anything else before you get out of here, man? Um, nah, man. Like I said, handle business these next couple weeks, finish up, try to finish up with this number one seed, which has never been done in school history. Um, and yeah, man, playoffs in three weeks, I think start November 4th. We'll be home, come out, Let's get this show on a roll, man. Official season starts November 4th. It's like the professional guys, sports. Yep, it's a different keep, ball game. It's a different season. ball game, 0-0. Zero, zero. You only got one time to mess up, and you might be going home. And, 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 and we, ain't, we, ain't, we, we up for the task, man. So, like I said, come out, support the guys. It's a beautiful thing that they have going on. But at the end of the day, you got to play football, man. And that's what we got our mindset on. All right, Dennis, thank you very much. Dennis Shaw yeah, in the of house. Course, I want to get a quick update. Well, we'll get it after the show because I got my answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got I think the other. Yeah, all right, all right my man, thank you very much for a great yep. job. Appreciate y'all, man. Always. Yep, engineer on deck, baby. C yep, CMP, Radio Delco Sports 360. I'm Dave Berman. We will see you down the road. Yes, sir.